Welcome to the Roundup series where I feature 10 tips, tricks or lesser known facts about Coda, plus a bonus one. This is a fast-paced collection of smaller things that don't necessarily deserve their own full episodes, yet are worth knowing. Enjoy! Let's start with this little undocumented feature. You know that you can resize table columns, but did you know you could resize multiple columns at once or make them equally wide? For that, hold shift and press on the first and the last column in the range. And either start resizing one of them or click on the border of one of them to make other columns in the selection of the same width. You can only select a range of neighboring columns, but you can always drag them together, resize and then drag them back. Doing this on your tables will give you that nice and polished look especially if you have a lot of same typed columns. Another trick that can make your tables look more polished is set some column titles to blank, especially if those are buttons. Now, Coda doesn't allow setting blank titles for columns. And even if you try using one of the numerous types of a white space character, Coda won't let you do it. However, there is a way to trick it with a special combination of symbols. The easiest is just to go to this website, emptycharacter.com, and copy the combination from there and paste it into your columns title. And voila, you have an empty looking title. You can do the same trick with page titles, in detail layouts where you need spacing and in page formulas that return blank values but you'd rather not see those square brackets. Since column titles have to be unique, if you need another column like that, just insert those characters twice. For the third column, insert it three times and so on. Don't overdo it though, because you'll end up with a lot of columns like that. Now let's move out of the table and into the page itself. Our next trick is about collapsing. You know how collapsing works. You can set a heading to collapse and it will collapse everything below it until it finds the next heading of the same level or higher. However, sometimes it collapses a bit too much. Like here, it hides the buttons that I want to stay or the columns, even though clearly there are higher level titles in them. So how do we set the boundary where to stop? Well, we need something on the same or higher level that we are collapsing, but we don't want the actual heading either. So we can totally use a blank line with no text on it and set it to the heading style. But depending on the heading level, it will introduce unwanted vertical empty space. So instead, insert the horizontal rule. You can also set a heading style on it. And unlike the empty text, it will always occupy the same vertical space in your doc, which is gonna be even shorter than the regular paragraph would take. And also it looks nicer. And even though it's technically a heading, it doesn't show up on the table of contents and doesn't clutter it. Trick number four, and please write in the comments if you knew it or not. You can actually zoom on charts. Not all types of charts, only the plotted charts such as all sorts of bars, lines, areas or scatters, but nonetheless you can zoom on them. I only learned it a month ago myself. Trick number five. You probably know that you can use formatting in a compose column. If you didn't, now you know. But did you know you can also use formatting in AI prompts? Yes, you don't get the formatting bar and not all options are available, like you cannot make colored text, but still you can set parts of your prompt to bold, italics, underline, strike through, as well as set heading or list formatting using hotkeys or markdown shortcuts. Trick number six, and I didn't consider it a hidden feature until I saw a lot of people on the Coda stream being shocked that they see it for the first time. You can actually customize the add row button that you see in the top of the table. Now, of course, you cannot customize the action. All it's gonna do is add a row and optionally open it. But you can set its color and the icon and change the label and also choose whether to open the row in a side panel or as a model or as a full screen view. Trick number seven. You know you can now upload custom icons for your docs, pages and callouts. But did you know you can upload animated icons? These have to be GIFs or GIFs and naturally they will appear small so you should pick something legible. Like I particularly like to use Slack emojis like the ones from this website. It is definitely a way to bring some fun from your Slack workspace into your team's docs. Another place where you can upload animated GIFs that you didn't think of is your page covers. You can use this capability on your titular docs to give them a more premium and on-the-brand look. And also attract attention if you're going to publish them to the gallery. They will catch everyone's eyes because they will have moving parts in them. Just don't make them too much in your face. Rather, choose animations that are really subtle. And here is yet another trick with cover images. These images don't just show up in the top of your pages. They also show up on those large buttons that link 
link to your pages. But what if I told you there is a way to set something better in there? Like here in my landing page for my services, I have the Codatrix logo in the top, but it doesn't really work in the bottom, so I made them display arrows instead. So how did I do this? See, the thing is, for page cover you can always reposition it, while the buttons will always use the central part. So the trick is to prepare a really tall image, or like this tall, put what you want to show in the buttons in the middle, and put what you intend to use as the cover in the top of the image. Then upload your cover and reposition it to show your logo, while the buttons will display something else. Smart? Finally, trick number 10 for today's roundup, and this one is hidden really well. You know how you can add reference a specific row. And again, if you didn't know, now you know. You can do it directly in text, or you can make a formula and set up the reference there. In the end, it will look the same. Within text, these add references always show up as blue text with the add symbol, hence the name. But what if I told you we can actually make this look nicer? Create a formula, make your add reference. You can see that it detected that it's a row from some table. But the type is still set to all so now you have to change it to that table. Now, when you open the type selector, it doesn't show you any of the relation types. But if you start typing out the name of the table, suddenly it will show up. Now disable the multiple selection button and voila, instead of that add blue text, your row reference looks like a relation chip. And if you have styling on the table, it will even be colored. How cool is that? And you don't even have to worry that you're creating too many formulas and they will clutter up your doc map or run you into limits if you're on a free plan. These don't show up as objects and don't count towards the free quota either. And they won't count even if you make them named formulas. And finally, the hidden feature number 11, the bonus one, is not really a hidden feature but something that many of you overlook for some reason. And it is the Coda community. The Coda community has a lot of information and a lot of answers. If you are struggling with something, you can go there and search and most likely you will find your answer. And even if it's not answered yet, if you post to the community, you can actually get it faster and a more complete one that you'd get from the Coda support. You may even get one from yours truly. But if not, there are a lot of other experts and really knowledgeable makers who are happy to jump in and help. So don't ignore it. Besides, it's also a great place to get inspired and learn new things. It's actually how I learned Coda, not from their docs, but from different community topics. And then I started answering questions and posting some tutorials myself. That's how I became a community. Community champion. And it's not just the title, it comes with some perks like direct access to Coda engineers, being a part of many early betas and internal events, and even using Coda for free. So get active in the community, start helping others, and you too may become the next Coda champion. Coda is constantly on the lookout for new experts. So how was that roundup? Did you like it? How many of these facts didn't you know? Please write in the comments, I'm really curious. And also please give this video a like and subscribe and also check out my Patreon. I already have a hundred more of these small facts in my queue and I'm looking forward to telling you all about them, but I'll only be able to work on these videos if I have your support.